Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We're on the moon and uh, Jeb is looking incredibly happy for someone that's stranded here. Uh, yes, indeed, I have gone and got him stuck. Uh, that was quite a, uh, a good last episode. We managed to get up here on like very little technology. Uh, no, this isn't the side I want. Where, where's the side I want? Um, yeah, I was surprised that I got this guy here. Um, and now he's stranded, thanks to the fact that I just can't seem to um, allow myself the correct amount of fuel. Ooh. But I have a plan. I do indeed have a plan. It first involves Jeb getting back on board the ship. Oh, come on, man. You can do this. Your jetpack skills aren't that rubbish. Grab it, grab it. There we go. <laughs> we're on and we're in. Oh. Okay, so... We may be stranded here, but we can do something useful. Um, I took this crew report and for some reason did not transmit it back. So let's transmit that back and we'll get 20 extra science. Oh no, ah, the whew. Wow, just got enough. All right, we're gonna turn the SAS off so we don't eat through it all. Why the, oh, because I don't have any solar panels. Right, anyway, so now that we've done that important bit with Jeb, we're gonna, um, Go have a word with Bill. I'd be like, hey man, you're the second rising star. How about we get you up to the moon to go rescue Jeb? Um, and this time we'll use a lot more fuel. Uh, I, th I, I think I know what I'm going to do. Um, these solid boosters are definitely going to help. And so's that uh, vectoring engine. Right, we can't afford anything else, can we? 16 and they're all 45s. Oh, so into the rocket building room and let's see what we can do right so first off we're going to need two pods because these are the only things we've got and we need to get two people back uh, two kerbals back so that that, that that looks pretty good right sleek streamlined um, a tour de force of uh, design stuff and things <laughs> uh, so if we turn them and point them down keeping with the streamlined look of this particular look, build yeah, and of course we need some science. Science, not utilities. Science. Uh, we only want two of those. One for in orbit and one for on the fl on the the ground. And because we want to return it, we'll need some parachutes. Perhaps more parachutes than mats. That many parachutes. Yes. Right. Now that we've got the parachutes down, we'll make them. If you hadn't guessed, here we are doing the landing stage, uh, a very important, uh, well, land and return stage. This is the stage that I messed up last time, so I intend to uh, put a lot more rockets on it. That looks like a lot more rockets. Alright, sweet. Now we need some landing legs, because what's the point of going to the moon if you can't touch down? Indeed, Jeb would not be impressed. Um, Now we'll just take a moment to make sure we get these level. It's good enough. It's good enough. And that, I believe, is our a decent landing stage. Uh, a quick moment to mess around with the uh, staging. And then we're going to start on our interplanetary, well, inter, inter body um, vessel. Vessel. There we go. Right now, in here somewhere. I think that's our best bet. Maybe two of these, one of these, two of these, two of these. But that's not all. We've got radial decouplers somewhere. Hey. So, with the power of the decoupler, we can put more fuel on board and then jettison it as and when. Um, now, this is the last stage before we reach a proper stable orbit with a nice burn to do. So I reckon if we have that one there to do the high efficiency burn, let's just double check. ISP and vacuum 390, 370, sweet. Um, and then we have these vectors just in case. And that makes everything about the right size. Yeah, awesome. Right now, on to our next stage. I kind of split this rocket up into three fundamental stages, um, as I try to do with all my my rockets: lander, um, interplanetary, 
module and then the actual lifter itself something's very wrong here this needs to come down and that needs to go there they need to join all these and we need to keep all our decouplers separate that's that one this needs to come in here and that needs to go up there okay I see so when that one goes we want all these engines to fire all of them then when that one goes which should hopefully be that we want these ones to fire now where are these radial decouplers coming to it they go didn't need the extra one they go down there okay little bit of sorting out sorry about that there we go we are ready to put a lander on the bottom of it um, I reckon we're going to need something on order of an awful lot of these because as I found out, it takes an awful lot of fuel to get where we want to go, and even more to come back again. And that, of course, is the important point. It takes a lot of fuel to come back again. Uh, we want radial to Do we want radial to couplers again? Let's put another one of these on the bottom. Certainly not so confident about my design. But we're gonna do it anyway, because that's how good I am. So we'll do this, and we'll pop that in the middle of this slot. Because middle of the rocket is always where you want to put stuff, I reckon. I don't know for certain. I don't know if anyone's done any serious uh, analysis into that. If they have, I'd like to know about it, obviously. Everyone likes to know how to be more efficient. That's the wrong one. I was hoping I could uh, grab and camp copy from these two down here, but of course the bottom won't stick to the bottom. Okay. Well, that to about the same sort of height. So we're spreading the weight evenly when we're sat on our engine because we don't have any uh, support struts. Stop clicking. There we go. And we're going to need many more than that. Many, many more. Six, eight. Eight's too many. Let's go six. Perfect. Right, and these want to be our fancy new vectoring engines. Where are they? These are them. These are them indeed. And then one in the middle. Uh, I'm so looking forward to being able to have the uh, asparagusing on when we get the fuel pumps. Right, now, I could surround this all with solid boosters. Sounds like a good plan. The problem with that is that I know it will give me too much thrust and spin me out because these vectoring engines aren't all that powerful. So what I'd really like to do is put three on here, but it won't let me, so I've got to go down and do them individually, which is horrible. Horrible. Um, I'll pop that there like that it should be on the, the middle bit on all the black lines just so we make sure we put them all in the same place because I'm not sure what would happen if we put them all in awkward spots but I am fairly sure I do not want to find out maybe that's something to check out one day just to see what happens oh yeah that's pretty pretty damn good no, oh, they're looking pretty good. We'll stick these big old white things on the side because they look even better. Yeah, sweet. Another one here. Oh, I don't know, that might be right, that might not be. Uh, I'm going to go with a judgment of close enough. And we'll pop this one also here. And we'll also give that a close enough. It's looking good. It's looking good. I think it's going to be well supported and I think we should have enough fuel to get there and return both Jeb and Bill. If not we'll have an even more interesting journey to do. Um, we should hopefully get a fair amount of science from this. 
And on top of it all, we are going to rescue Jebbings. Jebbins. Jebbins. Yeah, we're going to rescue Jebbins. Um, still haven't changed my mission flag. I'm going to go for the rings on this one. Yay. Okay, let's just take a moment to check our staging again. Uh, they want to go up there. These want to go off altogether, really. Uh, I think that will be beautiful at that point. Now. Hmm. These radial decouplings don't really need to happen first, do they? Because they're just there to hold the stuff on pl in place. So if we do that... I would have put just stuck it straight onto the fuel tank, but I'm, I know that the engines would have interfered with each other and stuff. So this is the Rescue Jebbins mission. Let's do it. Alright, sweet. Oh, it bounces a bit. That's not a great sign. Okay, let's come out and look for the moon. It's uh, not exactly where it needs to be, is it? What what swings faster, the uh, rotation of Kerbal or the moon? Kerbal moves faster, so let's bring this round until we see the right spot. A little bit faster. Oh, too fast. Far too fast. I am always a little bit speed it up happy on, on uh, this I don't, I don't know what the phrase is that I'm looking for here but I'm far too much of that okay so let's uh, go on with the launch oh as we lift ponderously into the air oh, and we'll just have a, a little bit of fight with gravity to get on that nice upwards lift Or, you can just go wherever the rocket wants to go and not where I want to go. I need control surfaces. I need control surfaces and many more vectoring engines. Many, many more vectoring engines. But I know this will launch off. I've used this design before. <laughs> and maybe we can get lucky with the flight path, yeah. Like now we should be able to just like ease ourselves into the way uh, too fast. Slowly climbing up to the, up the speed. Obviously we're looking to hit 150 meters per second by the time we meet the, the divide between the, the major layers of atmosphere. And once again, I'm pretty sure I haven't turned my spacecraft noise down. Really? Really? Okay, so uh, Kerbal Space Program, being the uh, ultimate instability that it is, decided to crash out whilst I was running fraps and changing the audio settings. So whilst I'm sure that last mission would have made it, we've had to restart. Um, I tweaked my engines a little, well, I tweaked my rocket a little bit, and we've got this beauty. Uh, it's literally just a few more rockets, a little bit more fuel, nothing, no major changes have happened to the design. Uh, I seem to be making some sort of uh, mistake with my builds recently, where I get this corkscrew effect. Um, I think it's something to do with my solid boosters, because if you watch here, now the spin starts to slow down. I don't think I've put them on sort of off axis or anything like that, so I'm starting to think maybe it's some sort of inner core problem, and when it gets translated out to the, like, the boosters and stuff on the outside, where it's got an increase in boost and an increase in sort of torque on the outside, I think that's what's causing me issues. So I've got to go back and sort that out. Um, but as for now, this one's flying up well. We've just broken the 100 kilometer mark. 100 kilometers? 10 kilometers? 10 kilometer mark. I always get that confused. 100,000 meters. No, 10,000 meters. Oh, oh, my distance is all shot away. Uh, anyway, um, I decided that I, I turned over a bit too far for the amount of atmosphere I was in. Um, I always have this issue. I don't know where, how... Uh, what angle to go up through the atmosphere. I know you start off vertically and at some point higher up you go You end up horizontal to push yourself out far, but wh where does that tra transition take? How long is it supposed to do? Uh, stuff like that. I don't know. I've, I've been experimenting oh, It must be about a year now and I still haven't quite 
got it, uh, got it right. But here's a, a little beauty shot of my, of my ship. Um, it's looking good and we're all flying well. We can see the islands, we can see the space base, and if I ever look up, we can see the uh, curvature of the atmosphere below us. So we're starting to reach the 50 kilometer mark and my fuel just ran out on my outer stage so I discard those and turn down towards the horizon to try and increase my forward velocity so we can get the cannonball effect and go over the, at the horizon. Um, uh, just as the music kicks in, beautiful. Now we're trying to raise up our speed to something along the lines of 250,000 meters per second. 250,000? Try 2,500 meters per second. Um, and that should put me in a nice circular orbit where I can try and um, not just align my planes but make sure that I'm in the right point of my orbit to push my way up to the, uh, the Moon in a rather efficient orbit hopefully because obviously we need to get all the fuel together to sort this out and come back with an extra Kerbal so hopefully this should be the least fuel consumption part going from the Kerbin to the Moon. Um, though I'm fairly sure getting off the moon and coming back to Kerbal Kerbin is going to be the easier bit because there's less gravity to fight and stuff. Well, I suppose the gravity is still the same, it's just, you know, less effects of because we're going sideways. Yeah, you got me? <laughs> And uh, just coming up after this next bit of staging will be one the one thing that I would call possibly a technical fail on this. Um, I threw away my big sort of vectoring engine to move down onto this uh, small sort of the, the mini poodle far too early. Um, I didn't like I was hoping to have my periapsis up above the atmosphere at this point and then just use this engine to boost up in a very highly efficient way up to the moon. Uh, as it happened, I was trying to circularize my orbit with it. Um, it was all right. It did. It did okay. I just, just wasn't quite where I intended it to be. I was like, I don't know what half a liter short. It really wasn't much. Thankfully, it was more than enough to get me up into this circularization orbit. So as I'm mucking about with my. Um, transfer orbit to the moon i'm going to say thank you for joining me for this uh, 17 minutes of adventure here and we're going to pick this on up um with my transfer orbit next time thank you very much for joining me bye bye